It's going to be, again, fairly quiet and, <clears throat> excuse me, warmer into the next several days. So it is possible that we could be looking at the uh, maybe some scattered showers out there somewhere in the future, but we do not have much of anything going on anytime soon. So you can leave the umbrella behind for now. I really doubt we're going to be seeing too much of anything out there anytime soon but we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit all right it is monday night the last day of september as i said this is weather overtime welcome to the show if you've got questions we've got the stream chat function working on twitch and youtube so if you'd like to uh, chime in and say where you're from and ask what's going on and uh, take a look and see what's going on into and around the area where it comes to weather. We'd be glad to answer your questions as best as we possibly can. So stay tuned for more on that. Coming up, we'll have the dog walking forecast into the morning. We'll also take a look and see what's going on uh, with the Almanac page and getting outdoors for tomorrow. That, again, is where we'll take a look at that in just a little while. Let's take a look at the temperatures here first, getting started right before the top of the hour. Temperatures back in the 60s and 70s, probably dropping a few more degrees into later on tonight. But for right now, it does not look to be too much in the way of anything very chilly. Uh, we may see the potential of some temperatures out there dropping into some areas higher elevation wise could make it into the upper 50s tonight. But I think mainly it's going to be 60s for most of the entire area. If we get, again, anything that chilly out there, that'll be about the best of the best current situation. Downtown looking uh, around the area from the Bailey's heating and air camera, public light library here, Lookout Mountain off in the distance, and beyond that, uh, not really much going on. It's been decently quiet for this evening. Traffic has been uh, pretty nice for today, even though we did have some raindrops out there. Lee Point, Plainview Outdoor Advertising Camera, not showing too much in the way of problems. All these cameras available on the EPB Fiber Optics Weather Cam Network. Some traffic slowdowns going on here. Let me just take a quick peek here and make certain that we're not seeing anything in the way of accidents. Uh, most of this is construction, and that is where we're seeing a lot of problems. Uh, for right now, this area of traffic, this is 75 north. This camera is looking north across toward the airport. This is the CHI Memorial Stadium camera. And again, you're looking north, signal mountain lights off in the distance, tomahawk crane and rigging camera. What you're looking at from right to left, that is 75 north, turning into 24 west that goes through downtown Chattanooga. There's a lot of construction going on just past this camera on this angle. And this is where we're seeing the worst of the traffic coming up from northern Georgia. If you're traveling from Atlanta, this is what you're going to be dealing with here. And that, again, going back to the west toward downtown now from left to right that's 24 east turning into 75 north uh, going toward knoxville maryville and that area well right now t dot is showing slow traffic just right in this general vicinity just past these trees and as you go toward brainerd road there's really not that much going on so it, we don't have any markers of any accidents it's just slow traffic so it looks a bit on the slow side at 75 24 and beyond that not showing anything in the way of any backups out there so very quiet uh, multi-vehicle crash reported around cleveland tennessee on state route 60 northbound in bradley county uh, multi-vehicle crash at Julian Drive. That's back to the east, northeast of Chattanooga, but not affecting uh, travel here. Anything past Ottawa and Volkswagen Drive, just not seeing that much going on. 71 at the airport right over this lane and from this camera. <clears throat> excuse me, looking off toward uh, the north and east. And again, for right now, I really doubt we're going to be seeing too much of any other problems for tonight. We do have a few scattered showers out there. At least we did. We don't have much left over, but you can see some pockets of moisture here. Most of this is just the radar detecting very heavy amounts of moisture just hanging in the atmosphere. Uh, usually we filter it out. We've ramped up the sensitivity to see if there's anything brewing out there. And for right now, there does not appear to be anything really uh, major league taking place at this point. So, so far outside of a bit of a drizzle for tonight, I really think that you can 
uh, forget about the umbrella for this evening for now. I want to mention this, and this was uh, part of the problem earlier. Now, this special weather statement was issued earlier on for western North Carolina around Asheville, just past the News 12 viewing area. And this was issued because of the fact that this area of western North Carolina were expected to have the potential problem with those showers coming down. It may not seem like much, just that little bit of rainfall getting into those higher elevation slopes where there's a lot of rock and dirt and gravel and stuff like that. If that rain gets in between there and gets enough moisture down toward the harder impermeable surfaces of the mountains, that could trigger a pretty good landscape slide and this is what the National Weather Service and the North Carolina Geological Survey wanted to make certain that everybody was paying attention to because that rock sliding down to the roadway surface could be a bit of a problem out there especially past dark now if there's any more rainfall that continues tomorrow we might see another advisory like this but right now that is so far the only thing that we have going on and that again was just outside of our area for western north carolina we want to mention also and this is something that was very important last week as Helene swung up through this area. We had some decent amounts of power outages here, but most of the worst power outages are in the Virginias, the Western Carolinas, Georgia, and down toward Florida, especially in areas of the Western Carolinas. There are still millions of people without power tonight, and that it's going to be a slow process because if you've seen anything of what it looks like in those areas 19 to 27 inches of rainfall from this storm and all that rain has got to go someplace and that has caused a lot of devastation so going through the area around Asheville down into the rest of the Carolinas not the best place to be because of the fact that we have all that storm damage to clean up from. So right now, sightseeing in this area is not recommended. You do not want to get stuck in front of an emergency vehicle. You do not want to impede the progress of emergency vehicles. So this area here, again, the News 12 viewing area here, southeast Tennessee, northeast Alabama, northwest Georgia, and a small portion of western North Carolina, that is where we are. The worst power outages are just over over this direction back toward the east. So that is someplace, again, if you don't have to be right now, if you're not, not part of rescue, if you're not part of government, if you're not part of first responders, uh, cleanup efforts and things like that, now is the time to avoid this area while everybody tries to get their life back together. And again, that is mainly to the east of the Tennessee, North Carolina line. So please, again, if you're traveling into or through this area here, may want to rethink your travels because the last thing they need is a bunch of traffic that doesn't need to be there in the first place. So please keep that in mind. Let's be courteous to our neighbors that are having a little bit more of a problem these days with the weather turning on them as it did last week. All right, so for the rest of the week, we see the potential for, again, what is left of Helene. This is it right here, just sitting across the Ohio River Valley, drifting its way to the east. Next storm system coming through should flick this thing out of the way, and then it's going to wash out in the atmosphere. And There's not going to be too much of anything left out of that. That front is through the Midwest right now. That's the first one coming through. This will be a weak one, but it should be enough to get this storm system going toward New England. And then we see another storm system forming well to the west of that. That one might have a little bit more punch to it, and as it gets a little bit closer to us, we'll be seeing the potential of maybe some areas of clouds, but I really don't see too much of anything going on where it comes to anything involving rainfall. We've got a very dry forecast coming our direction. So what does that look like? Well, the Island Cove Marina and Resort camera, a few clouds over Lake Chickamauga, the uh, river surfaces will continue to rise thanks to all the rain from Helene driving away downstream. A lot of reservoirs are releasing rainfall as all that water continues to continually flow in from the hills and mountains around here. So we could see this uh, river stage 
rise even a few feet in the next few days. That's going to be a lot of water going downstream. So if you're planning on doing any boating, canoeing, kayaking, things like that, you want to use some maximum amount of caution just to make certain you're not caught in any undertow. And please remember, there's going to be a lot of debris flowing through there. And if it's anything like an iceberg, 10% of it is visible above the surface of the water some of that down below the 90 percent you can't see that is where we could run into some accidents injuries or fatalities so let's be careful out there especially on the water surface let's get rid of that windy we are not going to need that uh, because it's not going to be windy tomorrow. We may catch the occasional breeze, but that's going to be about all. Temperatures over the next several days, not doing too bad. We are going to be back into the 80s again. That's pretty close to normal for this time of the year, but otherwise not doing too totally terrible. Uh, by the time this next front arrives, somewhere about Friday into Saturday, maybe a few clouds with this on Friday, but then that's going to be about it. Temperatures return to the 70s and lower 80s as we go into the first full week of october tomorrow is actually the first day of october believe it or not and that is where we see some nicer temperatures coming up today and next week sunday that's about as typically normal for this time of the year as you can possibly get so very close to normal a little bit above normal toward weeks end right before that next front comes on through but beyond that really just not looking at too much of anything going on so decently quiet out there for right now so what happened with the almanac page for today uh, we did manage to get a little bit of rainfall earlier this weekend but we are now <clears throat> excuse me inch and a half surplus for the month of september so the month of september we're above normal so that's good news we're still about half a foot behind normal for the year so we need another series of heavy rain to come through here we could use give or take there's about three about 10 weeks left so if we were to get a quarter of an inch to a half an inch every single week from now until year's end that would catch us up so we need a decent amount to get us over that so seven inches between now and then that's what we're going to need below normal on the temperatures today 78 the high 80 the normal temperature normal low of 58 and we hit a low of 66 uh, earlier today Let's go ahead and take a look at our coming in for a landing picture today from uh, Susan Waybrandt of Delano. Beautiful view of one lone hummingbird coming in for a landing or maybe taking off after a brief nosh back in the yard there. Thank you very much for our Langley Roofing weather window picture of the day. If you've got pictures, we'd love to see what you're seeing. Go ahead and send them into us at pictures at WDEF.com. If you can drop them off to our social media pages that would be wonderful or you can go to wdef.com slash photos and we'd love to see more about what you're seeing out there please give us a location and or description you can be anonymous if you want to but at least give us that much information that would really help us out in the long run heading out with the pupper in the morning doesn't look too bad for right now maybe some patchy fog out there but otherwise not doing too bad uh, thanks a lot didn't get a name on here but thank you anonymous for a picture of socks the dog who looks like he or she is ready to go for a game of fetch uh, that's from ringgold thank you very much for sending that in and temperatures again after some fog burns off should be relatively pleasant thank you rough cuts dog grooming of cleveland tennessee for being our sponsor here that's the dog walking forecast which you can contribute your pictures of your particular pupper at home just go to the website here wdef.com slash dog walk so you can take a look around and see who's been submitting their pictures as well all right now the big question of the day is what's going on with the tropics we have all this mess of clouds right here that was a category for hurricane last week so that is pretty much over and done with into the tropics this is very active right now most of it on the far side of the atlantic so there's not that much going on in alphabetical order we have isaac which is now a post tropical cyclone it is expected to go very close to the british isles into the next couple of days 
could be some decent wind storms going on there. Not expected to grow in strength anytime soon. Joyce has diminished to a tropical depression over mid-ocean. That is a classic example of a fish storm not bothering anybody but the fish. Going to the K storm, we have tropical storm Kirk, which is expected to become a major hurricane in the next few days. That's category three and above. This is expected to curve upwards into the mid-Atlantic, also expected to be nothing but a fish storm. So that, again, is where we stand with those organized systems. One not quite so organized yet is where the big red X is. This system has just moved off of Africa and is already showing some very healthy promise. 60% chance of becoming a tropical depression in the next 24 to 48 hours in the next two to seven days it stands a 90 percent chance of becoming the l storm so that puts us roughly if not just a little bit over about halfway uh, through the alphabet for the year and that's exactly where we were expecting to be at about this point we still have a long way to go and we're not done yet all those there's four systems there let's go back a little bit closer to our side of the hemisphere and show you what we've got here somewhere in the western caribbean following the track of helene uh, also Beryl, also Debbie, if I'm not mistaken, moving up somewhere into this particular area. This is now up to a 40% development risk in the next two to seven days. Remember the waters here in the Bay of Campeche and down into the Western Caribbean are off the charts hot. The water temperatures here are rocket fuel for these storms, which helped Helene go from a tropical storm to a Category 4 within about 36 hours or so. Now, that's not quite what Otis was last year, but it's pretty doggone close. And there's a couple cells here that are expected to possibly curve right along the western coast, but these do not appear to be bothering the United States anytime soon. If you're heading to Acapulco, Gulf of Baja, southern coast of Mexico anytime soon, this could be a problem. But more we are concerned with this particular development area here because the wind's conducive enough to stir something up and push it back toward the north or so into the next several days. Now, that's not a guarantee of what may be coming, but so far, and let me just double check here, this system has not gotten an area uh, investigation designation when a storm gets organized enough to start being studied by the National Hurricane Center and have the computer model forecast run on them it, they are given an area of investigation so what is called an invest with a number and a letter behind it designating which system it actually is this system is not even close to being organized but it is getting fairly close so this is something that really uh, needs to be watched here with our next system probably going again somewhere from here down or from here downwards up into the area going northwards toward the gulf and those water temperatures 90 95 degrees in some areas and the loop current going strong it's a lot of heat transport for these storm systems to take advantage of so this is something to definitely watch if you're planning any trips to the gulf coast in the next several days i would say between now and next monday this is going to be something to watch out for so this is something to really pay attention to on that we'll be doing that so keep it tuned to news 12. all right two things to get you ready for storm season we are coming up to the second storm season of the year here in this area of the country give or take between roughly october and december anywhere between right after labor day and right before to just about christmas that is this area's number two severe weather season if you can't get to a skywarn spotters class taught in person at various locations by the National Weather Service offices that teach them that cover this area of the News 12 viewing area. The National Weather Service in Morristown is offering an online Skywarn training virtual storm spotter training course. This is a genius idea to be able to get you what you need to get trained to become a Skywarn spotter. If you have a certain amount of Skywarn spotters around the area, that's great. If you have much more, 
you have that many more eyes watching the sky and keeping an eye on what is happening. So this is very important. If you would like to become a Skywarn spotter, please consider doing so. You can find out more at our website, or you can find out more at our, the National Weather Service website at, uh, at weather.gov slash mrx. Uh, I need to take the course again pretty soon. I have taken it every year since I was a sixth grader, so I definitely want to stay up to date with what's going on here with uh, Skywarn spotting going on. So please keep this in mind. If you can't make the in-person meetings, which are coming up for the fall semester, again, October through about late November, this is a time frame you want to pay attention to that and try to attend one of these meetings. It would be a very good opportunity to learn more about helping your community, about severe weather safety, severe weather practices, more information about meteorology. I've seen kids as young as seven or eight take this course, and it's a great opportunity for kids to get a little bit more control over what feels like a very uncontrollable situation when severe weather rolls around. If you've got a phobia about severe weather, this is where you want to start start to try to reduce that fear and make certain you are ready to go. Now, one of the things that we're having a lot of problems with in the last uh, several days since Helene has rolled on through is communication. There are still thousands of people that have been uh, lost. <clears throat> Nobody knows where they are. They unfortunately may have uh, been killed by the storm, but a lot of people are probably just trying to get back in contact with their loved ones, their friends, their family, things like that. This is, and not meaning to harp on anybody's tragedy, but this is a learning moment if ever there was one, to be able to say that you are better prepared instead of saying, I hope and pray that this situation doesn't happen, that's great. Faith is a wonderful thing. But when it comes to action, uh, in my personal beliefs, I believe God wants us to use the brains that he gave us to get ready to go to make sure that we are set and ready and not quite as fearful of what may happen. So staying ahead of the game, getting information, weather alerts on many different frequencies, many different apps, many different uh, sources of information is one of the best things you can possibly do to make certain that if it becomes necessary to shelter in place, to evacuate, whatever is ordered by the authorities, that is something that can really help you. But here's something else to take a look at. If you are in one town, your mom, your dad is in the other, your brother, sister is somewhere else, all of your other family are in various different locations. Well, if the location right there is hit directly or impacted heavily by the storm, so there is no or very limited communications, one of the things that you can do is to get yourself a, away from the situation, have an out-of-town point of contact. This is a very simple thing to do. And for, for instance, our out-of-town contact for my family is my father-in-law back in Knoxville. And thanks to Mr. Tom for uh, being that service for us on that. So if we can't get in, if my son, my daughter, my wife, and I can't get in contact with each other because communications are having problems, we get in contact with that out-of-town contact and tell them, I'm here. And then another person checks in and says, oh, your dad, your mom is here. And my son or daughter gets in contact and says, oh, your family is gathering here. This beforehand can save a lot of running around and a lot of problems where it comes to anything involving uh, after effects of a disaster. And that can go from just about anything from a tornado to a terrorist attack to a hurricane. If you have the extra steps laid out so that you are able to contact this person and say, on day one, I'm going to be here. On day two, I'm going to be here. On day three, I'm going to be home. Uh, again, I'm having trouble getting in contact with everybody here. So the, all of that helps communication remain open and hopefully, again, reduces confusion because a lot of people right now, because they did not take that step, have people going different directions trying to look for them uh, and look for them in some, unfortunately, 
very unfortunate places like the morgue or a hospital or something like that when they're just fine they're just a block or two or a mile or two away someplace and the people looking for them would know that if we already had a plan in place to make certain that we were able to communicate well and that reduces confusion and reduces wasted manpower hours it really helps in an emergency situation so please consider tonight tomorrow anytime soon getting something like this organized because again making an emergency plan by just winging it or just hoping it won't happen that's not a plan that is not even close to being a plan that is a recipe for disaster and when you go through disaster like Helene did to the Carolinas the Virginias Florida Georgia you do not want to be messing around or wasting time with well I thought he was going to be here I thought she was going to be here why is he not here why can't I get a hold of him his last message is two days old uh, he was supposedly here she was going to meet up with him here well I thought he was going to do something else get all that straight before a disaster happens so that when evacuation becomes necessary if it does then the person who is a central point of contact will be able to tell everybody else he's here she's there they're going this direction they're expected to be here by this time frame just a little bit of planning the boy scout marching credo is be prepared that's the motto and that comes in very very handy sometimes to make certain that everybody can be get caught up to date without racing around if you can keep your head while all about you are losing theirs thank you rudyard kipling that comes in very handy on situations like this so please tonight before too much more time goes by get yourself an emergency plan find someone to be an out-of-town contact that you can reach out to when something happens and that you can all get back together and get back to normal that much sooner it's one of the best things that you can possibly do when it comes to excuse me anything in the way of emergency contacts think that's about it for tonight let's do a couple more things here uh, let's see getting outdoors tomorrow actually not bad temperatures will be back in the lower 80s and again near normal temperatures winds occasionally breezy but otherwise not doing too bad for tomorrow likewise out on the golf course you probably should not have to worry about anything uh, in the way of weather more blue skies more dry conditions so about the only thing you'll have to worry about is that gopher trying to steal your golf ball out there and somebody makes sure you get uh, spackler let him know what's going on because the janitor and the groundskeeper needs to be very much uh, in the know if there's gophers out there causing any problems think that should just about do it let me do one more thing here uh, into the classroom tomorrow whether it is preschool or postdoc uh, not bad overall looking good for the rest of the day as conditions are going to be mild uh, if there's anything in the way of closings or delays that take place again go to our website wdef.com slash weather uh, for more information okay we've been on for a better part of half an hour that's pretty much our target time right there to keep everybody updated as to uh, what may be going on so we're going to go ahead and throw you back to your regular uh, programming no comments on twitch no comments on youtube at this time so looks like things are decently quiet overall so for the last night of september heading into october tomorrow enjoy october while you can uh, because october goes like that most years it's going to be november before we know it so uh, next few weeks great opportunity again hopefully for some good weather to be sticking around and we'll keep you updated on that questions concerns ideas anything you want to express complaints if you much e email address at the bottom of the screen at aonic at wdef.com and you can find out more about our forecast at our website at the bottom of the screen wdef.com slash weather chip chapman will be in with the forecast bright and early on tuesday morning i'll be back tomorrow evening with an update with what's going on with weather on weather overtime and throughout the rest of the evening for the first of october so stay tuned for more on that so live and direct from downtown chattanooga i'm chief meteorologist austin onick with the latest edition of news 12 weather overtime our exclusive video weather blog stay tuned for more with news 12 on air and online and we'll see you again coming up on tuesday evening Thank Thanks for joining us.